if enough people repeat a myth it becomes a fact this adage is true especially in saving and investing where a lack of solid personal finance resources has led to many misconceptions these misconceptions have a reputation for crippling wealth creation or mass hi guys welcome to that in today's video we are going to debunk 10 of these misconceptions myths and untruths about savings and investing myth number 1 Saving is equal to investing. It's not uncommon for people to suggest that saving money and stashing it in a bank savings account is investing. That is just not true. The reality is that saving money from your salary is an important exercise, but it may not be enough. Moreover, it definitely isn't the same as investing in stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, and others. The average bank savings account in India can give you a 2% to 2.5% interest at best. Assets like stocks, ETFs, and mutual funds, on the other hand, are known to beat inflation comfortably. Thus, saving may not be enough to beat inflation, let alone create wealth for goals like financial freedom. Myth number two: Investing is only for the wealthy. Investing is a concept many believe is reserved for the rich and wealthy. This myth becomes compelling when you take into account the median per capita income of India, which is five thousand dollars, roughly three lakh ninety-seven thousand eight hundred and twenty-two. Most people don't have enough money to invest, while those who do are reeled in by myths and misconceptions about saving and investing. This may explain why only four percent of India's population, or a little over one crore people, actively invest in the stock market. To debunk this myth. We'll have to take a historical view of how saving and investing in India has worked. Traditionally, the average Indian in the 20th century preferred to invest in bank fixed deposits and gold. Who doesn't love safety and lucrative returns after all? In fact, there was a time when FD interest rates were a whopping 13% in India back in the 1990s. Gold, on the other hand, was preferred for its sentiment and value. The belief was that it could stand the test of time as it could be passed down to future generations. Stocks and other assets were reasonably volatile and were accessible to affluent investors who had the know-how and means to invest in them. But times have now changed. The truth is that online investment apps like Dhan have made it possible for anybody with a PAN card, stable internet connection, and smartphone to invest in various assets in India. Myth number three: You need a lot of money to invest. Carrying on from the previous myth. It is a general misconception that you need a lot of money to start investing in ETFs, stocks, mutual funds and others. This is far from the truth. While good investments do cost a premium, the money you need to begin investing is relatively low. You can start a daily, weekly and monthly stock SIP on Dhan for a low amount. Furthermore, some mutual funds may allow you to start with as low as rupees 500. Once you start investing and remain invested for a long time frame, you would automatically start realizing the power of compounding goes without saying you need to select your investment avenue after thoroughly going through your risk profile and appetite with number 4 investing in stocks is gambling you may have heard this myth first hand when conversing with friends and family because of the rampant price swings and mishaps in the 90s Many in India still believe that investing in stocks is similar to gambling. Lots like the Harshad Mehta scam have left a sour taste in the Indian stock market, while the dot com bubble served as a bitter reminder of how innovations can turn to dust easily. That said, the reality is far from this, and many myths of the stock market. The Indian stock market of today is significantly different from one that was around in the 1990s. Bear in mind that India had just gone global at the time and was recovering from a crippling economic crisis. One could even say that the country was finding its way into the financial world. Fast forward to today, there are laws, regulations and governing bodies like SEBI in place to ensure that the needs of investors are looked after before anything else. Furthermore, publicly traded companies are always under the microscope. If the governing bodies get even a whiff of wrongdoing, it generally spells trouble for the company in question. But that's not all. The growth of the Indian share market has been steady across the past three decades with periodic drops. This is one of the reasons why stocks are known to be the best way to make money in India, especially with proper regulations in place. Now. To summarize, there is a method to the madness. one that relies on thorough research diligent financial planning and a deep evaluation of your risk profile this brings us to the next myth with number 5 timing the market is important which approach do you think is likely to make more money in the stock market 
investing across market highs and lows or investing when a specific event happens let's say a pandemic market crash etc the answer is both maybe however number 1 is known to be far less stressful than number 2 as you will have the chance to invest consistently when the markets rise and fall based on what works for you that is without the stress of constantly monitoring the markets to find the right time to invest there's more timing the market can be difficult even for the most seasoned investors because investor behavior may be irrational economic conditions may be hot or cold and markets themselves can be volatile it is famously said spending time in the market is more important than timing the market if you apply this practically you realize how consistently you can generate returns from the market myth number 6 there's a right age for saving and investing the longer you give money the chance to compound the better the results can be but that is not bad news for those who want to begin saving and investing at a later stage in life truth is it's better to start investing as soon as possible than to dwell on the fact that you have begun late this will give you the chance to generate potentially better returns than leaving your surplus cash idle furthermore not everyone's life story is the same comparing your journey or questioning whether you should be investing in the first place may put a damper on the potential wealth that you may be able to create Let's take an example to drive home this point. Someone who was born in 1960 invested in Sensex when it was established in 1986. As of 2022, that person would have earned a whopping 9,564.4% return. On the flip side, let's say someone born in 1990 started investing in Sensex in 2009. they would have on 509.17% returns by 2022 in either case the investor would have made money and beaten inflation the investor who was born in 1990 cannot create wealth by questioning why they weren't born sooner the only way to create wealth is to start investing regardless of age and time myth number 7 term insurance is an investment an investment is an asset that earns you returns Moreover, you can plan your investments such that they are liquid and can be redeemed in pass or as a hold when necessary. Term insurance does not check any of these boxes. For starters, it is not designed to generate returns or have liquidity. Term insurance is meant to safeguard the policyholder's family. Furthermore, investments are made by identifying factors like risk profile, financial goals, affordability a term insurance plan is crafted by establishing your life's worth based on factors like age health present and future finances present and future expenses inflation the confusion or myth in this case may be due to hybrid assets like ulips that try to provide protection and generate returns The ironic part is that most ulips are known to fail in achieving more. At the end of the day, a term insurance plan is a service that you pay for. Thus, it's useful to treat term insurance as protection for you and your family rather than an investment. Myth number 8. It's too early to start saving for retirement. A working professional in their 20s and 30s may feel like retirement is a lifetime away. Their investment approach may also reflect this. The harsh reality is that not everyone has the luxury of a pension. The sooner you start financial planning for your retirement, the better chance you have to fill your post-retirement needs with the returns your money has earned. This may also put you on the path towards financial freedom before retirement. Most young investors start small when investing for retirement and periodically increase the amount as they age. This is known to be more useful than saving huge sums for retirement later on in life. Choosing the right investments, however small, can be useful. In fact, small investment ideas have the potential to generate lucrative long-term returns. You can check out small cases on Thans platform to understand how good portfolios can generate greater returns for you. Myth number 9 Budgeting and setting goals are not necessary. How often do you encounter folks who want to invest but can't get started as they don't have a plan? Or someone who invests but doesn't have a plan and is thus haywire in their approach? The reason behind this problem of personal finance planning is twofold: a lack of proper budgeting and no financial goals. Unless you know what your money is working towards, you may not be able to select the best investment. The first step to fixing this is to draw up a budget. A budget will help you identify the amount of money that you can save and invest without having to sacrifice your needs and your wants. The 50/30/20 rule is one of the most popular budgeting rules out there. Once you know how much money you can invest, you need to narrow down your financial goals that are realistic 
achievable and actionable which is spread across short term medium term and long term after that it's just a matter of picking the right investment based on your risk appetite while we are on the topic of right investments financial goals more or less dictate the investments you should choose for example stocks are known to be suitable investments for the long term Investing in stocks for your short-term goals would thus be a little suboptimal and you might assume higher risk. Myth number 10. You don't need tax planning. Let's be honest, taxes are confusing. So much so that most people may choose to avoid planning taxes. The myth thus becomes, I don't need to plan taxes. It's going to be deducted anyway. The truth is that efficient tax planning can help you save money and generate returns. For example, investing in ELSS funds NSC tax saving FDs and others can help you reduce up to 1.5 lakh rupees of your taxable income under section 80c you will have to invest the equivalent amount to get the benefit furthermore nps can help you save rupees 50000 more under section 80ccd 1b there are other sections too that help you save a lot of taxes having the correct knowledge about them and identifying which tax slab you fall under is crucial because you will know exactly how much taxes you need to pay or save this factor will tie into the next one which is setting financial goals most tax saving investments are known to be suitable long term either due to a mandatory lock in or by design if you have long term goals then these investments may become the means to achieving them. along the way you'll also earn lucrative returns by saving on tax next up is to know which investment can help you save tax we'll cover the popular tax saving investments here elss funds public provident funds national saving certificate tax saving fds national pension scheme and sukanya samriddhi yojana alongside senior citizen savings scheme some of these are known to be the best investments to make money along with saving taxes however it is useful to consult a trained financial professional for tax planning savings and investment all in all financial myths are known to stunt wealth creation by limiting the investment horizon a person can access the pointers above may help you overcome barriers untruths and myths about saving and investing hope this video helped you bust some of your myths about savings and investing and you will keep following us for more such insightful videos in the future